Um, several years ago, a university on the East Coast actually developed two bridges in two different lab rooms. The first bridge um, was very tightly constructed, had guy wires out, high ceiling, uh, pretty high off the ground. It was 11 and 12 feet off the ground. In the second lab room, the same bridge was constructed, but the bolts weren't tied down. There were no guide wire. It wasn't going to fall down, but it wasn't very uh, solid either. They brought 20 young males into the first lab room of the college experience. They stationed at the end of the bridge an average-looking college co-ed. They marched those 20 guys across the stable bridge, and at the end of that bridge, they were asked to rate the appearance of the co-ed at the end of the bridge. They then marched them into the other lab room, walked across the bridge, and the same <coughs> co-ed was there in the afternoon, and they asked them to rate the way the co-ed looked again. Then just to make sure that they weren't skewing the results, they brought 20 different guys back with another college co-ed at the end of the rickety bridge first, marched them across, had them rate the, the attractiveness of that co-ed, brought them back that afternoon, marched them across the solid bridge. You know what happened? The guys always rated the, the woman more beautiful when they went across the rickety so when you go through high-level periods of stress and anxiety and depression in your life, people will always look better to you than they really are. Always. Okay? So, with that idea in mind, we're going to take some questions. Before questions, I was asked to remind you, we have to be out of here at 11 to get our children. Okay? So, we have the luncheon scheduled. They have nothing on their schedule except the luncheon and I have nothing on my schedule. My man knows this is my job today. So they will be available for questions between 1130, 1150-ish until I can get them over to the luncheon. And then during and after the luncheon, they are available for questions, you know, during that time too. But I was told to make sure everybody knows you have to get your children at the We will be out in five minutes. So I will cut it off at 1125 so that I can close this instruction. Okay. Q&A, you might have any questions they want to ask like we said? Feel free. Research a an increase in adulterous relationships going in the same sex arena. Never done any research on that. Never have. I just have always focused on first time heterosexual adulteries. Can you talk about hormones like premenopausal when we hit our forties and and for a, a midlife crisis situation for a man? I mean, what does that? How does that play into it? Run, baby, run. <laughs> Well, um, I just did a workshop last week for uh, a large international association of senior adults. And it was titled, uh, Just Naughty? Question mark. Still Wrong? Question mark. Cohabitation after age. It's a huge problem in Christian circles, okay? Now, the reason why I say that about what you're saying is, let's go back to the original thought. Men look at sex as the greatest source of comfort. The greatest antidepressant medication known to males is sex. It's not Prozac. Okay? It's a huge distraction from all the stresses in their life. They never become asexual. Actually, in some of the research, men are still reporting high levels of sexuality and low levels of ED, much lower than we thought, uh, put up into their 80s. So, and Viagra has changed all that since 1998. So, um, it's, it's, it's that they're looking for bonding, they're looking for comfort, and you might not feel much like it, but you can really minister to the man you're married to. Now, the greatest sense of bonding in first-time adulteries always, almost always occurs when there is intense internet activity between the two partners. It's not the sexual activity. It's the intense internet. Question, talking, texting, in touch with each other, asking questions, staying, in touch, making suggestions. Now, let me say this. Your mother never taught you how to flirt. I don't think any woman here would say, your mother set you down, and this is how you do it, guys, okay? You flirt with it. You, you have this capacity inside yourselves. But what happened, and what happens in most marriages, you start
stop flirting. You stop creating sexual tension. You allowed him to take you to the bedroom as soon as you tease. Sex was over, the teasing stopped, your femininity suffered, and as a result, there's very little sexual tension in your relationship between the two of you. The greatest component, I think, that is needed in marriage today, not just Christian marriage, is sexual tension. It flirtation builds femininity, and it also creates sexual arousal in guys. And you've got to keep that tension. You can't just satisfy it instantaneously, or you'll lose the tension. It's the tension that you want to create. It's what makes you feel fun. It's what makes you tease. It's what makes you uh, flirt with each other. It's what makes you send little suggestive emails with each other. It's the sexual tension. And if you don't know how to create it, you need to find out. <laughs> I don't want to get started, OK? But uh, OK, we got one more question. Time for one more. OK, let me say this. Tomorrow, uh, Thursday. Thursday, I'm doing an all-day training on how to recover from adultery. And at 1 o'clock, I need a couple um, that I can work with who would be willing to work with me. I will take very good care of you. I will not embarrass you, put you on the spot or anything like that. I have a little gift for you. And if you will help me do the training uh, with the different uh, chaplains and social workers, um, I would love to talk to you about it. You and your husband, your husband needs to be there. You get to choose the topic you want to talk about. I've done this all over the world, and I promise you, you'll be very safe and love it. You'll love it. So just see me afterwards, and I'll explain to you about that. Go. One question that did get arise in this um, group of the other group was about can couples make it after an affair? Oh, yeah. Of course, the answer was yes, they can. Yeah. There was another thing. And the spouse, the, people, the wife said that they had gone to a chaplain